Hello, welcome back to our module on pipelining a RISPI processor. We are quite proud when we designed the functional RISPI processor, and that was quite an accomplishment. But I have to tell you a secret. Nobody uses, in practice, nobody uses single cycle CPUs. There were some early on um, single cycle CPUs, but um, they basically have been abandoned over time. Why? Because they're generally inefficient. Um, there is not every instruction uses every stage, and single cycle CPU really is, uh, has a cycle that is set by executing all five stages of processing. So what do people do? They do pipelining. And the reasons are very similar and the mechanism is very similar to what we have seen in laundry processing. In laundry processing, we saw that there are four stages of processing, washing, drying, folding, and stashing. And generally, when there are multiple people who need to do the laundry, there are multiple um, laundry tasks that need to be performed. Nobody really has to wait for each task to complete to go through all four stages of laundry processing before we sta start the next one. We generally will go ahead and load the washer immediately after the first ta task is done with that and then we'll proceed as we have seen before. The same happens in processors. Like laundry processing, data processing in processors has so far five stages. Instruction fetch, instruction um, decode with register read, ALU or execute stage, memory access, and write back. And in our example, we have put some times um, that, are, you know, represent, that are reasonable representatives of how long does it take. Um, we said the instruction fetch takes 200 picoseconds, register read takes 100, um, ALU takes 200 picoseconds, and memory takes 200 picoseconds. Finally, register write is the same as register read, about 100 picoseconds. Notice that register read and re register write are shorter than the others. It has significance, we're going to come back to that later. So the entire, executing the, instru the entire instruction um, is a sum of this, all of these stages, um, and uh, equal the, uh, the time to execute the instruction equals the time to go through all of these stages, and that is 800 picoseconds. We're also using uh, a pictogram here that you'll find in uh, the textbook, in our textbook, and in some other textbooks that is trying to illustrate what is active. So when this box that represents a memory is shaded only half, and when it is shaded on the right hand side, it says that we are reading from that block. So when we are reading from the registers, we are also shading the right hand side. On the other hand, when we would like to write to the memory, we will shade the left hand side of the block and so we would do during the register write write back cycle with the registers on the other hand when ALU is active we shade the whole thing okay so let's take a look at our silly way or how does the single cycle CPU process data so here is a stream of instructions instruction sequence that we would like to process and there are a few of them so let's say we first run into an add. We are going to run through an add as a, in, in single cycle, we'll process all five stages. We'll fetch the instruction, decode it, access the registers, perform the addition operation that we figured out during the decode process. Um, we don't need to do anything with the memory, but we are still going to wait for that time to pass, then finally we'll write back. And then when we're done with all of that, we'll do the next instruction, which is the OR. And when the OR is done with writing back, we'll start the third instruction, which is uh, shift left logical. 
this is wasteful as we have seen in the laundry example so we can do better how do we do better well we are going to pipeline we don't have to wait for the, the entire instruction to complete to start the next instruction we just have to free up the, to wait for the first resource to free up which is an instruction memory as soon as we are done with reading the add out of the instruction memory even though we don't know it is add yet it's just you know we have read 32 bits we can go ahead and start reading the next 32 bits we'll read or and we'll, we'll start that or immediately after we are done uh, reading the ad so two things are going to happen concurrently we'll decode the add instruction and fetch the or instruction and as soon as we are done with the or instruction uh, re reading of the or instruction we can go on to the third one shift left, left logical so while we are sh reading shift left logical from the memory and we have no idea that it's shift left, left logical we will be accessing the registers for the or instructions and performing the addition of the for the first add instruction notice that one thing had to happen here um, we had to separate these stages with registers so-called pipeline like registers otherwise all the data would get mixed up so what we are seeing here is that these instructions are being processed concurrently and each instruction is in a different stage of execution so our clock cycle is there to transfer us between these stages of execution or move the data between the pipeline stages it is not associated with processing of the entire instruction so t cycle is a lot shorter it's one fifth of the time that it takes us to process the entire instruction we'll see more of that in a second so there is another really important thing compared to a single cycle cpu the time to process the entire instruction is now longer and it is longer for the reason that we have to ha set the clock cycle to match the slowest stage in the pipeline what does that mean well that means that we have had these imbalanced stages in the pipeline some of them were taking 200 picoseconds some of them were taking 100 picoseconds now since we are using one clock to clock them all we have to set that clock period to be 200 picoseconds otherwise if it is shorter than that some of these stages would not be completing their operation so t cycle for a pipeline processor is 200 picoseconds that's a lot shorter that is one quarter of what we have what we have had um, for a single cycle cpu which was 800 picoseconds but the time to execute the entire instruction is 1000 picoseconds so it is longer so we lose on the latency of the single instruction but we gain dramatically on the throughput okay let's take a look at a bit of a comparison between the single cycle and pipeline instructions most that is in this most of the things that are in this table are fairly logical and we should um, we should have seen them and noticed them already the timing per stage or per step varies in single cycle it is fixed for all pipeline ones um, because register access is only 100 picoseconds and in pipeline they all have to be made to be the same length the cpi cycles per instruction ideally is set to one in practice if you have any memory misses we'll need more than one cycle per instruction depending how good is our memory system we will deal with that in great detail a bit later in practice pipeline systems allow us to have multiple execution units we'll mention that briefly later but it allows us to actually bring the cpi below uh, below one that is not the subject of this class it is a subject of cs152 now what we have seen the clock rate here was 1 over 800 picoseconds or 1.25 gigahertz 
pipeline processor can run at 5 gigahertz um, and achieve a 4x speed up so in summary the instruction time the time to execute an instruction gets a little bit longer but we get a dramatic improvement in throughput because we got dramatically higher um, clock speed remember our increase in throughput is not equal to the number of stages that we have that theoretically we could have 5x increase in throughput but since the stages had imbalanced delays we lost a little bit we still get a good increase of 4x and that is the reason why people always design pipeline processors as we'll see the design process is not logically not much more complex than the single cycle pipeline so why not do it? Let's take a look at the moment of what is happening sequentially and what is happening simultaneously when we are executing these instructions. So we have a list here of six instructions and notice that the coloring here is showing that the add instruction is not accessing the memory or instruction is not accessing the data memory shift love log logical neither that one is accessing the memory but store word is writing into memory so the left hand side is is colored load word is reading from the memory so the right hand side is shaded and add immediate is not accessing the memory so um we are you know there is not much to, to add to here this is the time to execute the instruction it's a thousand picoseconds or one nanosecond and the cycle time is one-fifth of that or 200 picoseconds now when we would like to know what is happening here in in sequentially it is the usage of resources in the pipeline or stages in the pipeline by one instruction resource use of instruction is sequential in time each instruction goes through the fetch decode and register access execution phase memory access and write back on the other hand multiple instructions are using different resources at the 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 same time so there are five instructions here that we will say in flight that are using different resources because they're available so uh, these resources here the first instruction is near its completion so add is writing back the result into t0 um, or is in data access stage it's not doing anything it's basically just waiting uh, for the add to be done so it can write back its result in t3 shift left logical is using the alu to perform the shift store word is um, uh, um, essentially fetching the t3 and t0 values from the t3 and t0 register such that it can use them in the store operation load word is just being fetched from the memory and we don't even know that it's a load and that's it that we have to what we need to know for now conceptually about the pipelining of RISC-V processor it is very similar to running laundry we're going to see what in the next module what we need to do with our data path to support that so see you then after a bit of a break